Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Max with Buzz Talks here, and I am back with a Westworld Season 2, Episode 5 reaction and review. In these videos, I give my initial thoughts on the latest episode of Westworld to air. And I give my initial theories and predictions of what I expect to happen next. Now first I gotta say, this episode was awesome. And it did a really great job at further fleshing out the world that we love while building on the existing rules that they put in place. The introduction to Shogun World I thought was perfect. And I thought it was really interesting to see the parallels between Westworld and Shogun World since Sizemore pretty much ported over storylines between the worlds. And while introducing Shogun World, this episode also did a great job pushing storylines further and fleshing out characters even more. And they've even added new plot points that are going to greatly affect the story going forward. But before I get into all that, I first want to start with Bernard. So unlike last episode, we saw very little of Bernard in this episode. And we saw him in the present time. The time where he's traveling with the military, and he met up with Charlotte. And we see him at headquarters pretty much reacting to everything that's going on. And what we see is, is that they're gathering all of these hosts that were seen in the water in this random lake. But the most interesting plot point is that these hosts are blank. There's no true data there. And I think this hints further at what this represents. It could almost represent a baptism, where you shed your past body and turn into something new. These are the hosts that potentially made it to the valley beyond. But they had to shed their old skin and take on something new in order to reach that place. And it seems like based on the position that Bernard is currently in, he's going to be having a lot of flashbacks in the upcoming episode. We see him in the control center while it's getting shot up, so we know that he's been there to experience that. And currently we know that Bernard is searching for that module of human printed host code that Ford had him print. So it will be interesting to see where that leads Bernard. And since Bernard is confident that he killed all those people in the lake, it seems like he's going to have a very strong role to play in the upcoming episodes. But more importantly, we go on to Maeve, and this is really her episode. So Maeve naturally got captured because she can't control them with her voice, because she doesn't speak their language. And what's interesting with Shogun World is it's not as far gone as Westworld. These hosts are still obeying their code. But as soon as Maeve got there, she kind of threw a wrench in it. We see the typical robbery where Hector and his minions are looking for the safe, but this time it's in Shogun World. We see a new and interesting interpretation with characters that are based specifically off our Westworld characters. And we see the character based in Shogun World off Maeve is the first to make a true choice out of her existing code. And it's funny how both of these characters were ones to break the binds of their code. And we see throughout the episode this connection between Maeve and her Shogun World self. But the difference is, is that Maeve gets to see that mother-daughter relationship that she's craving. But what's so great about Shogun World is it seems like the perfect place to push Maeve to the next level, and that's exactly what happened. Because the ninjas weren't obeying her commands, she was pushed to the point of desperation where she almost died. And then she found a new voice. And this voice allows her to control any host on her command. But the difference is that she doesn't have to use voice. And this is unheard of. She's the first character other than Ford, the creator of these hosts, that can control them to this extent. Now I think her receiving this voice raises a lot of questions. Why would she just get this voice out of nowhere? And I honestly think this is deeply tied to her and her level of existing consciousness. I know some people believe that Maeve has reached consciousness, and I'm going to stick to my guns and say that she isn't for these specific reasons. It's been proven that she's still following Sizemore's script. She's not talking for her own yet. And this new voice that Maeve is hearing, I believe it's something that Arnold wants all the hosts to hear. And that's their own voice. Now the key question is, how can she control all of these hosts with her mind? And I think Maeve is a very interesting character, in the sense that she's the first host who has access to change the code of other hosts, or change the will of other hosts. She pretty much has a network in her mind that she can access. And since she's on her way of reaching the center of the maze, and the center of herself, it might be the key in allowing her to find the voice of all these other hosts. And I think that's going to be a key difference between Dolores and Maeve, and I think it can have a lot of implications on the plot moving forward. Dolores cannot do what Maeve does and never will, because in the first season she found her own center, her own voice. But with Maeve, before she found her own voice, she's been connected to all these hosts. She's able to change their commands on a dime. And I believe that her reaching her center has allowed her to link up through all this code. So all these hosts are really just an extension of herself. 
So I think that Maeve is going to get more and more dangerous as she gets closer to finding her center. And that has implications going forward because if Maeve and Dolores ever reunite, Maeve could potentially control every person that Dolores has following her. But I think the key there is that Maeve could never control Dolores because she has reached her center. And we'll have to wait till next episode to really see where this inner voice is going to take Maeve. It seems like this episode was truly the introduction to her hearing this voice. And she's in the perfect place for her to find that voice. She was pushed to the brink of death on a quest to get her daughter. And this time is different because if she dies, she dies for real. And she'll never be able to see her daughter again. That's a level of suffering or desperation that could push her further to the center of the maze. Also seeing the love between Maeve's Shogun self and her daughter. And the torture and hell that they went through was also a factor that could have pushed her to find her inner center. But we see Maeve finally pick up a sword and say that she's going to use this voice that she's hearing. So it'll be really interesting to see the level of control that she can have with this new voice that she's acquired. But we also get a look at Dolores in this episode. And we see the reason she went to Sweetwater was to get access to the train. She wants to repair it up and ride it all the way down to headquarters. And in the last season, we've really seen what this looks like. Because of William, it's the entrance where the guests enter Westworld. So it's the perfect place for Dolores to strike. And it's the most likely place they would keep her father, Abernathy. But while they're in Sweetwater, we get a look at one character making a change that I'm really starting to like. Clementine has been this robotic soldier for Dolores that does whatever she says. She's been completely wiped with no personality. But we're starting to see that come back. Even though she's been wiped, she seems to have access to her reveries as she's mimicking what her new self is saying. So there's still a piece of Clementine in there. So it will be interesting to see where she goes or what she becomes. But the most interesting host that I'm asking that question right now is Teddy. And this episode, I think, did an excellent job fleshing out Dolores and Teddy's relationship. Because Dolores, even in the last couple episodes, we see that she's struggling with her relationship with Teddy. Because he's somebody that's always been around. He's always been a part of her life. And she's always loved him. But the problem is, is that she's second guessing herself because she's been given Teddy because of her code. Because of her story. And because Teddy didn't shoot that guy, told Dolores that he isn't operating on her level. He doesn't see the stakes that Dolores sees. And I believe that Teddy letting that go was just another part of Ford's storyline. Craddock... The guy that Teddy let go was necessary in pushing William to the brink of his journey of self-discovery, coming to terms with his own actions and his self, so he can further pursue his adventure, the door. And we see Dolores feeling Teddy out even more in this episode, where she takes Teddy to where they always went. And she gives him the example of a cow sickness that spawns from flies. Teddy said that he would build a shed for the sick, he would build a shed from the sick cows to protect them from the flies. And I think that's what's so good about Teddy is that he's a kind person. But the problem is, is that if you follow Teddy's way, unfortunately, the sickness stays and it spreads. And whether Dolores is right or wrong, it's these difference in ideologies where Dolores and Teddy don't see eye to eye. And it makes it even harder for Dolores because Teddy isn't thinking for himself. She was using the example of flies, but that also goes in hand with helicopters, with drones. And Teddy thinks if they go to some corner of Westworld and put up a tent, they'll be okay. But I think what Dolores is trying to push on Teddy is that they'll never be okay. Because flies are unpredictable. They're always around. You can never get rid of them. And I think this is the realization where Dolores knows that she loves Teddy, but he isn't where he has to be. He isn't real. And Dolores tells this to Teddy after they make love. She says that she finally decided that their love is real, and she wants to be with him. But in a twist of fate, she takes Teddy to this room. And this is great because we get to see a side of Dolores that she hasn't showed yet. The side of her being a Judas steer. The Judas steer is the head bull who leads all of the other ones to the slaughter. And that's Dolores' role. She loves Teddy so much and she wants him to be real that she needs to lead him to that suffering, that torture, for him to reach that center. Dolores made Teddy feel like their love was true. She made Teddy feel all these powerful feelings and then in a twist of fate, she changed who he was. And I think this kills Dolores, but it's what she feels like she has to do so Teddy can make it to the Great Valley beyond. And so he can reach consciousness. But the one thing here that caught me off guard is that she changed his character, and I don't know what this is. They're going to change his character so drastically that if he doesn't have a full reset, he might not hold it together. 
but Dolores is ready to take that risk. So the current Teddy that we know has been overwritten with another host. And the question is, who? And I gotta say, at first, I'm not 100% sure, but my initial reaction is that she could have uploaded Wyatt. That side of Dolores is what allowed her to be the revolutionary. And if Teddy has a piece of that, he might be able to see a new perspective and understand the other side of what Dolores wants him to see. Now, whether Dolores is right or wrong, I'm not sure. But because she's conscious, it's a choice that she's making. That's why I think William's role could potentially be so big. Dolores has reached her own center and can make her own decisions, right or wrong. And I think William, going through the door, would be key in a sense to maybe bringing Dolores back on the right track. I know that Teddy was printed before William ever made it into the park, but I think Teddy and William share a lot of similarities. And I think there are parts of Teddy that were changed to resemble William. And that's Dolores' true love, and it always has been. And I think that once he makes that transition, he could be the impact on Dolores to potentially change her mind or go in a different direction. But at this point of the show, I do understand where Dolores is coming from. If she doesn't try and kill humanity, then they're going to die. And I don't see a point where humans and hosts can live in harmony. But that's just my perspective. But that's it about my rumbling and rambling about this episode. I absolutely loved it, and there's a lot more to think about. But please, let me down below, what did you think of this episode, and what did you notice about this episode? Do you have any theories? Do you have any predictions? Let me know, I want to know. But, until next time, I'll see you guys later.